And welcome, ladies and gentlemen, to Geek Watch, a subsidiary of the monastery, the open bar of the internet. I am your one and only gaming monk, better known as Mildred, and with me I have my good I have my good brother of, of the temple, the man of a thousand runes, the CEO of Zadari Enterprises, and the bane of my fucking existence. Good brother Xanatrix. This obviously it is not Sunday, this is another monastery special. So, let, let me tell you a little bit about this about this week's t about um a little art project that's been going on for the throughout this month called Sword Timber. And the the idea is a one, is essentially a one word prompt, and artists are artists are dis, are tasked to design a sword or something equivalent to a sword. Um, within the for each day of this particular challenge. Um, I only found out about it this year. I'm not sure if it was done le in d done in previous years. Probably was. Especially in 2020 because, you know, people got to have something people got to have something to do when everybody's locked up. But Turning the world into a prison was not a good idea. You think? But with that, but with that in, with that in mind, as I was looking over some of the very interesting designs that I came that I came across when some artists that I know um, decided to join in on this thing, I ended up get I ended up getting the I ended up getting a bit of a curiosity where I where I thought, you know, we're not artists, but we are but we are wannabe designers and the and theory crafters. So why don't we do our own spin on it? And thus I present to you constructing sword timber. We are going to be going th I have the full list of prompts. And yep. we're going to be going through each of these and trying to trying to come up with an idea on the on the sword and what on the sword that would match each and what properties this sword has. And of course, not all. And let's not forget that not, that not all swords are create are created equal because um, there are multiple types of there are multiple types of swords, and not all of them have to be in the long sword variety. In fact, I'd like to see more. I'd like to see more swords that use the um, use the setup of a um, Egyptian kopesh. That's an interesting looking design. Kopeshes are nice, uh, but they they require a specific. Uh... A specific, um, I guess, inspiration. They're very tied to their culture and their and their geography. Well, so so are a lot of sword types. That's true, but there are also sword types that were tied to their specific place in geography that then spread worldwide, like the scimitar. And of and of course, katanas. <laughs> No, katanas are still tied to their culture. You just have a bunch of weaves saying, "This is the best sword ever." I remember when katanas are underpowered in D twenty was a meme. I mean, katanas were just plus one masterwork bastard swords, right? With an exotic weapon tag, so you had to take a new fucking. <sighs> I'm not getting into that. That'll just make me angry. Yeah, um, we've 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 um co we've covered that we've covered that kind of thing in the past, um. But I w I want to say I want to save talk about that about that game and its adjacent material for tomorrow. But the first word the first word that I have uh, that I have on this on um, on the prompt list is shadow. Ow, the edge. <laughs> um, now, one of the one one of the early examples I saw of this was so, was somebody drawing a somebody drawing a sword that was broken, yet the shadow of the sword um, was was not broken. Which yeah is an interesting setup. Um, Reminds me of uh, some very familiar settings where 
the length of the sword is not the length of the sword you see because magic. Yeah. Um, also, also reminds me of um, of Ator. For those who, for those who like going really deep in their fan, in their um, sword and sorcery exploitation films or Conan knockoffs. No, I wouldn't know anything about that. <laughs> not like I've been watching all the things that are inspired by Hyperborea for forever. Well, Ator is a tricky is a tricky one because it had like it had like three or four different names depending on depending on where and when you got it. <laughs> I remember that confusion. <laughs> um it's not even the strangest instance of this kind of thing because, well, conquest still exists. <laughs> conquest is one of the reasons why I never have to do drugs. I think that's the best way for me to put it. The other best way to put it, guys, is uh, go watch it. You'll be just as entertained as if you watched Cat Soup. <laughs> oh, that's another one for the torture list. Torture? What are you talking about? We're we're educating the monk. It's education. <laughs> yeah, yeah, when, you, when you put when you put your hand on a hot stove, you're educated that it hurts. Yeah, but that's usually due to your own stupidity. Torture implies outside uh, outside uh, forces. Fair. Um, but the the approach that I'd like to take with this particular prompt is what I'm is. A sword is a sword that I'm calling the Stitch. Um, this would be a very, very thin blade. It's a set, essentially, essentially, it would look, it would look, it would look more like a blown up needle. Uh, um, not as in a no, sewing no. needle, not needle as in the. I, I was gonna say no, not that one. Yeah. Um, <laughs> and it is um. It is pl it is playing it is playing on a well worn fairy tale a well worn um trope that we all messed with as ki as kids. If you stick this in the ground where someone's shadow is, they can't move. That's an interesting way to put it. Um, I mean, if if people would like a, us to use a different word than needle, just because they don't want us to con to be confused with a uh, hack rr doesn't finish his books. Um, <clears throat> uh. A stiletto knife blown up to larger sword sizes, and even even by large sword with this is this thing is about the size of a short sword. That's why I said larger. Mm -hmm. Um, I can see that being a, a shadow sword, uh, you know, thin, easily concealed, even as a short sword. Mm -hmm. You could probably. Uh, especially as a short sword for somebody your size or mine, you could hide that along the spine of your back or along the uh, along the side of your thigh. Um, in that case, since it is an easily hidden sword and its purpose is more restraint than uh, than offense, should it be should it be a sword that doesn't have an identifiable cross guard in order to be more easily concealable? Yeah, that was that was already that was already my plan. I planned for as little cross guard as possible. I mean, there should be a tiny amount just in case you have to go into open combat, but you should probably not be using the sword for open combat. No, and since you brought up stilettos, those are those are mainly used for thrusting, not for um not for much else. Thrusting and uh assassin work, yeah. Mm -hmm. Which of course again fits the idea of shadow. Um Okay, so the the next real question is: Should it should there be any identifying ornateness and or characteristic to it beyond its power and low profile? No. Okay, so it's a it's a fairly simple thin blade mm -hmm. um, that, when stabbed into a person's shadow, immobilizes them. I mean. Guys, this this is for those of you who are ancient weebs, this is the taboo of shadow from that chapter in Yu Yu Hawk Show that held Yusuke hostage for ages. Mm -hmm. Before Sensui showed up. Fuck you, Sensui. Um 
the ne the next one that we have is light. <clears throat> now, wait a minute. I didn't. I didn't. Uh, I didn't order any death notes. <laughs> now, I think it. I think a fairly obvious approach with this because it is to is to is to go with um. To go to go with light to go with light as, as in well the op, the obvious things but instead of using that definition I want to use light as in the absence of heavy. I mean, that's another way to use the word light. <laughs> it is just a prompt. Mm -hmm. I'm not always sure that light as in absence of heavy is a. Uh, is as interesting as in light, the thing that will fucking blind you if you stare at it too long. Well, I, f I, but... fi I figured, I figured the lat, I figured, um, I wanted to go with something a little less obvious. Yeah. Well, I mean, I'm sure what your your allusions were to things like uh, Mr. Travis Touchdown's main weapon, but still. Mm -hmm. uh... The approach that I'm, the approach that I'm go that I am. That I'm going with with this particular um, this particular one is I'd say this would be this would be in a shape sim similar to a um, to a to a saber. Um, okay. And, so single edged, slightly curved. Yeah, and I w as far as there is a there is a bit of ornateness since it since the um, blade since the blade. Um, Looks more like a feather. Um, this is not. I'd say. I'd say a good representative would be. Um, would be the sylph blade that Serpico had, in um, Berserk. Yeah. Okay. Um, but by the way, uh, as an aside, we we just defined a saber as a, as a slightly curved blade with a single edge. Mm -hmm. Does that mean that all tachis and katanas technically fall into the saber category? I. I am glad that I'm, if Joku was here, he would probably argue about argue otherwise until the cows come home. Oh, uh, that would be Joku. We miss you. You need to come back. But uh, yes. Uh... But I do. Th I do think that I do think that some that that the issue between the two is aside aside from the handedness um, weight. I know. I'm just. I'm. I'm being funny to mm -hmm. piss off all the pedants because yeah. your pedanticness is not warranted, people. But the approach, the approach that I'd go with the, with this particular weapon is that it controls the is that um you're able to ha you're able to exert control over your over your relative um um gravity. Essentially, you essentially you are very very light, which means um. Which means you could. Which means, you could literally leap tall buildings in a single bound. Oh, don't say that. We'll get sued. Oh, those assholes don't know when to stop suing. Remember? <laughs> you could, ju you know, being a being able to being able to jump high, being able to being able to move relatively quickly. You're not you're not super fast or anything. You you just um. I mean, pair it with wind magic, you could become super fast, but that's a different story. Yeah. Um, on on the down on the downside, um, you're easily moved. Yeah, I'd say I'd say in, I'd say in some level you're it, it. The best way to describe it is you're effectively moving as if you're in low G. Now, is this an at will ability that you could disable at any point? Or is yes. it just as your okay? Okay, that makes sense. Oh, you, that means ooh, oh, I'm already thinking. Mm, that's cool. Okay, so you could you could come in for some really weird strikes and then turn it off just as you're about to throw it, just so you get your original weight back, making somebody anticipate a lighter strike and then get fucking wrecked. Mm -hmm. yeah. And of course, this also means that your that your attacks don't really hit for shit. Mm-hmm. Until you turn off the anti grav. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um. All right. Yeah. Uh. Since since we did compare it to a saber, it's about a a one handed longsword size. Yeah. Um. And it's fairly ornate. Looks mm -hmm. probably 
We could probably, with the comparison to Serpico's uh, Sylph Blade, you could probably, you could probably uh, make the ornateness, uh, making it look like a quill pen. I mean, you'd have a built-in uh, handguard just from that alone, basically. Pretty much. Um, the next one is um, insect-like. And oh. Oh, before before we get to that, I forgot I forgot to get I forgot to give the name, and I think I think for I think for a weapon a weapon with the light prompt, just call just calling it the feather would be so would be suitable. Mm hmm. Did we give a name to the shadow one? Yeah, Stitch. Oh, that's right. Um, not to be confused with Experiment sixty six, but you no. know. Um. Now the now next is insect like. Yeah. As tempting as tempting as it is, I don't think we can go with an insect glaive. <laughs> I mean, who said that that a glaive is not just a sword on the end of a very long stick? This is this is the perfect moment for the you are technically correct, the <laughs> best kind of correct meme, yes, but as much as I hate it. Yes. But I'm th but for me I'm think when I think of a when I think of a wep when I think of a weapon that is um that is in that is insect like I've I um I, w I, I honestly w I honestly want to the v the big the big thing that the big thing that comes to the big thing that comes to mind for me with this is a um it is essentially essentially a a um a sword with a, with more of a more of a sickle um like like blade um, because it's going to emulate the mandible of just about every type of insect out there the mandible is, cer is certainly one aspect but the other but another thing i was thinking of is the is the claw of a uh, praying mantis that could also work um that uh if that's the case we could actually uh we could have um an, uh, a time in which rather than a sword it's some sort of comma but still oh. the i'm actually I'm a, since you mentioned since you mentioned a a sword on a um sword on a stick um what we is as is what a glaive is. I'm thinking we. I'm thinking we go with a. Um, po I'm thinking we go with a polearm approach. See, my technicalities are the best technicalities. Yeah, we just ha <clears throat> we just have an extent. We just have an extendable handle, so we can technically say it's a sword. Um, the key thing that I'd have with it is that the. The so is that the uh, the um mantis end of this thing. Um, can go can go straight to be like a war scythe, or can or can go can go ninety degrees to be like a scythe. Um, war scythes go ninety degrees to the pole as well. My bad. My bad. So you've um, you've got you've got it going straight, or you've got it going ninety degrees. So you've got a naginata or a war scythe. Got it. Because if you look at Naginatas, those literally are basically just katanas on the end of sticks. Yeah. But now you're, de but now we're just designing a weapon I designed in 2007 for a an uh, Organization 13 character I made up. So, um, I would I would say in I would say in this <laughs> regard, um, the this part this particular the blade is um is is very is very serrated. It's it's me it's meant to it's meant to sh you're not meant to really cut with this thing. Oh, now we're going into dot hack gu. This is just Haseo's fl uh, flick reaper site. Got it. <laughs> <laughs> but um, <laughs> in this case, the serration doesn't move like a chainsaw site. Um, okay, I can Hon see that. Honestly, when it honestly, I'd when it comes to the fact that this doesn't cut. I'd say I'd say the closest weeb analog I can think of is the Samehada from Naruto. Mm -hmm. 
The shark skin sword, yeah. Yeah, and how how that thing doesn't cut. It just it just gr it's just meant to grind on someone's skin and shred it. And also drain them of chakra, but yes. All right, yeah. Um, I can see that. Mm -hmm. Um, what's its name? I'm I'm thinking of keeping it simple and just calling and just calling it Mantis. I was thinking of either okay. Mantis or Mandible. Yeah, Mandible isn't as a uh, isn't as uh, iconic. Plus, any anything can have a mandible. Mm -hmm. We have mandibles. We just call them jaws. Um. So the next one is ghostly. Ghostly. Hmm. There's there's a lot of things that ghostly could mean in this case. Um. It could it could mean. Um. The the the. the I actually, I actually do, ha I do have a, I do have a bit of an idea for this one. Um, is the is the fact that the, that um, it when normal people see th see this particular sword, it is completely invisible. It's like you're holding an invi you're, you may as well be holding an invi a invisible sword. Um. But when, but when this thing, that it, that is when someone's holding it, because the approach that the approach that I'm going with is the name. I'm working in a reverse a bit. The name that I'm going with is exorcism. the 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 approach is that normally it just lo it just looks like a a fairly a fair a fairly average um longsword in 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 a sheath that is co that is covered in um in prayer strips um when it's when it's drawn however it would seem that the sword it would seem that the sword um disappears but what's actually going on is the sword and its wielder are um between the physical and spiritual planes and the and thus are it they're able to um they're they're able to in to to interact and f and fight um ghosts it's just it's just that while they're wi while they're wielding the thing um they hit they ha they have they're on a timer because the more that they the more that they're um on that on that barrier the closer the closer they get to being on the other side of it and once you cross that line, it's hard to come back. Kind of sounds like Kamen Rider Ghost. <laughs> hard to come back from being a Gunma when you become a Gunma. <laughs> I'm just, I'm just saying, I'm just saying, you, you wield the thing. You're able to you're able to see into that realm and f and fight and fight off spirits, but but as you ho as you hold the thing, you become more and more of a spirit yourself until uh, until you sheath it. If you manage to sheath it before before the transition finally um, completes itself, you'll you'll get then the whole thing resets. An offensive version of the One Ring. Got it. Yeah, something, something. I I guess we can go with that. I mean, if, for example, Frodo had had this in hand when being uh when being ambushed at Weathertop, I don't think the uh the ring wraiths would have had a good time. Probably not. So <laughs> the next the next one we have is lava. Um, let's see. It's tempting to go with the uh the giant sword made of semi-hardened magma. 
but I feel that's a bit obvious. Mm -hmm. Now, what especially doesn't help is that is that the is that the one of the two mobile games that I will actually that I actually endorsed um, had had the kind of sword that if that otherwise I would have come up with myself. If you remember mm. um, Inferna from God of Blades. Yeah. Yeah, I remember. Yeah, you don't get much more lava than that than that sword. But um, let's see. I uh... I do have I do have one I do have one partic one particular idea. Um, I do too. Go with yours first. I was think I was thinking I was think I was thinking of a. I am thinking of a great sword, but it is a, it is a great, it is a great sword, made from obsidian. By all by all accounts, it is nothing more than a hulking mass of obsidian. <laughs> that yeah yeah that um isn't it doesn't have a sheath. You have to summon the you have you have to summon the thing, and it com it comes up from a. From a crack, as if, as if coming out of coming out of a um ex out of a volcano. Mm -hmm. Um. Of course, of course, one, of course, the thing the thing pops up, hits the ground, then co then cools into obsidian. Um, sword you can just summon from anywhere. Yeah, you can. You can. Um, some places might not be a good idea. Because it still is one. It still has to come up from the ground, and two, it's not exactly subtle. So don't summon it in the middle of your favorite inn and burn down the town, guys. Just remember that. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> okay, that's a pretty fun idea. Mine was a little more um, gimmicky, I guess. So it's a uh, it's a it's a slightly wider bladed fencing saber with with the whole basket uh, around the the hilt and everything, mm -hmm. except it's made of what looks to be dark granite. Mm -hmm. Um, but that's only when sheathed or not held and used in battle. Uh, when someone's holding it, the edge is covered in literal flowing lava. And it's flowing very quickly. So goes up the edge of the blade to the tip, down the spine, and back down into the basket over and over and over again. Yeah, I don't. Um, I think we can combine. I think we can combine these by putting Ooh, in an effect on, 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 on the one on the one that I mentioned, where um, as it as it's wielded, it's gonna it's. It cool. It cools. It cools when nobody's touching it. But as it's as it's wielded, because unless it's wheel, and the only way to get around this is by having somebody cold blooded wield it. Mm -hmm. It's getting. It's getting warmer and warmer. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> so the longer you hold the thing, you the more you risk your hands burning off because you're you're eventually going to be holding, well, lava. Mm hmm. Of course, and the only way to reset this thing is to is to drop is to drop the sword and let it re and let it return to the earth. Turn to the earth, you accursed lava sword. It's okay, I've got fire resistance at max. We're good. <laughs> um, although this probably means that Hellboy could wield it. Hmm. That's so very true. Yeah, now as far as as far as as far as this as far as the name um I am th I am thi I was think I was thinking I was thinking of go of going with either red flow or um eruption. Eruption is better. Red flow has some uh connotations I don't want to deal with. Yeah. Um. <laughs> Besides, eruption's a very uh, manly name. If you catch my <laughs> drift. 
Um, next is snow. Or to, or to quote uh, to quote Ryoma Nagare. <clears throat> when there's a hole, it's a man's job to thrust into it. <laughs> anyway, snow. Um, there have actually been a lot of variants between swords that that deal with snow in one form or another across uh, fiction. Mm -hmm. From the typical uh, fairy rapier slash saber that uh, that it, that is used as a as a dainty weapon for a dainty but cold woman to uh, Rukia Kuchiki and her <laughs> her snow katana. Sore no Shirayuki. Yes, yes, but I'm just calling it snow katana because that's basically what it is. <laughs> to, uh, again, using bleach, which I know I have bleach on the mind and I really should not have bleach on the mind because the fucking Thousand Year Blood War arc is terrible, but... Um, or at least terribly paced and explained. <laughs> Tight, learn to write again. <laughs> and give me my money! Uh, or even, um, but, but the, 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 I guess to say one of the best examples we have of, of snow being associated with more dexterity based weapons is the fact that it even extended into Ruby with a uh, vice mm -hmm. Uh, even though that's a dust saber and loads in different, uh, dust cartridges on those, on those particular chambers, uh, it still mostly looks like a, a rapier. Yeah. Um, I think we should go with something entirely different. The approach, the approach that I, the approach that I w that I was considering, following up on that on that el on that elemental um, aspect, um, mm -hmm. I am call I am call I am calling this um, blizzard. And um, no, not that one. They're still being sued. Although they already paid off one of their their lawsuits, they already they already did, but they, but they're still geek of the week. Yep. Um, the 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 approach the the approach that I'm going with is is consider consider this: snow is thousands upon thousands of t of tiny little ice crystals. Each crystal different from the last. Mm -hmm. So the the approach the approach that I that I am going with is that bl Blizzard is a is a swarm of these crystals that that can be can be manipulated into forming whatever um whatever sh whatever shape the whatever sort whatever um sword type the user desires. And break and breaking apart and forming whole new and forming whole new setups. Open get. <laughs> Some somebody's somebody's got Getter Robo on the brain. Hey, I just finished Getter Robo arc the other day. I am sad that that the first season stops exactly where the manga stopped, but it does look like they are planning on doing more, which I hope they do Ishikawa san justice. Mm -hmm. Um, but yeah, the because of, because of the because of the approach, it's either in t this thing is either in two forms, either either it either it's um it's in the f it's in the form of of pick of pick a sword pick a sword any sword, or it's in the form of this of this um cl of this cloud of snow. Okay. That's constantly flow. That's constantly flowing about and going all over the place. I think the cloud of snow itself should also be very, very sharp. Yeah, like like literal diamond dust. Mm -hmm. So, the next one that we have is storm. Again, no, not that one. She's very nice, but I don't think she's a sword. No. And. When it come, when I when I picture this, I'm think I'm thinking of a because of how because of the thing with a the thing with what would be considered a storm is that you have you have many different varieties to choose from. You can go you can go with your good old rain. You can go with hail. 
You can go with a, you can go with a thunderstorm. You can go with a tornado. You can go with a hur- with a typhoon. You can go with a fucking hurricane. I think though that when people say storm, and correct me if I'm wrong, because this is this is the image that tends to come to most people's minds that I've talked to. They do think thunderstorm. Given given that, I'm thinking that I'm thinking the approach that I'm thinking of with this is. Some is something akin to a DAO. The key, with one key, with one key change, the sword the sword itself is is hollowed out, and within that hollowing are are um str- are strings. The reason that this is important is that those strings generate noises that sound like that sound like tiny or lar- or sometimes larger thunderclaps. I can see that. I was a. Uh, I can see that. I, 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 my, my thought was, I think much, much different. What, what did you have in mind? Uh, a Tessai warfan. Mm-hmm. Um, and it produces the thunder claps. Um, because it's a pair, and you can produce it when when they're waved. Uh, perpendicular to each other, basically. Mm-hmm. You wave them at each other rather than beside each other. Of course, they'll they'll also uh, create large wind pressures if you if you combine the two at their bases and yeah. rotate them. But I think you know. I think to further extend the thing with the uh, with the DAO that I mentioned, um, having 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 um, having clouds having clouds go having clouds go off of it and and water um water th- water getting thrown off of it during sw- during swings would cer- would certainly help one um one other thing that I would that I would probably do is the wheel di- you know how sp- you know how um spiritual pressure is a is a ca- or 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 psychological pressure is a concept that's seen a lot in sh- in sh- in shonen battle manga go, go, go. Yes. I'm, Anyone who's watched JoJo knows about that pressure. I'm thinking of doing something, doing something like this, where where um, the air itself feels heavier, the same way a barometric a barometric change um, indicates a storm might be coming. You lost the opportunity there, so I'm going to make it for you. I am the storm that is approaching. If you were uh, if you were on the opposite end of the, of this table, I would smack you for that. No, you wouldn't. <laughs> no, uh, no, I would f- no, I would find I would find something to throw at you. See, I know you. It's too much effort to get up and come to the other side of the table. <laughs> Not worth trying it yet. <laughs> no. Um. So the the next the next one that we have is anchor. Totsugeki. <laughs> hey, hey, no, no, no! I'm not letting that one go. Fuck you, dolphin bitch. Guilty Gear Strive. Balance May. <laughs> Totsugeki is not supposed to win everything. <laughs> no. Um. Though the the um, I do. Ha- <clears throat> you know how you know how we you know how we had um. How we had how we had light make you light as a feather, with it yes. with anchor. Um, I'm thinking that I'm thinking that this is this is a ba- this is a bastard sword that um, would look more would look more like a ca- would look more like a kanebo than a sword. Or I, actually, I suppose I suppose it'd be even better to have it look more, look more like a Tetsubo. And okay. if light made you very light, um, this particular weapon, which we which we which we are which we are go, which we are going to call which we, I'd say we are going to call heavyweight, um, literally makes you very very heavy. <laughs> Not heavy enough to to where that you can't move, but movement is a case of stomp stomp. Stomp. You're a lot heavier. You're a lot tougher, but you're a lot slower, and you're and you're not as and you're not as quick. 
This is your typical mighty glacier counter build. That's mm-hmm. what this is. But, and of course, of course, this only applies when the thing when the thing is out in the op- is out in the open. Otherwise, it just has the just has the normal weight. Um, if you if you want to, you could you could have you could have this you could utilize the old um, the old sword in the stone approach, where somebody where somebody puts it down somewhere, and even the strongest of the king's men can't lift it. If you want to go for that approach, you can do it. Not saying we're doing that, but you could. Is this also going to be an at will uh, like like? Um... Like our our uh, our feather was, yeah. So again, you're just gonna have it out. You're gonna swing it around like a normal sword, and then when they're expecting a normal hit and guarding for it, you increase your weight all of a sudden. Actually, if, if somebody had it, dual wield them. If some if somebody dual wield them. If, if somebody had um if somebody had feather and heavyweight, um. You realize what they could what they could possibly do is jump really really high, then sw- then switch over to anchor and do and do a du- and do a plunging attack. Yes, or they could just fight like literally all of the Edaten do in the uh, the <clears throat> Edaten no only piece, um, where they they actively make themselves lighter since they are literal gods um to move quickly and then at the moment of impact increase their mass several times to increase impact strength mm-hmm. i'm just uh i'm just saying dual wield them and and you 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 too can be a god that kills demons it's not the first time that i've tooled around with this concept because once upon a t- once upon a time, I created a I created a devil's fruit called the shot shot fruit. Which mm. ba- basically basically reduced the relative weight of what of of anything that you were holding. Yeah. In, in this case, the character who had the thing, um, he would he would fastball throw cannonballs at ships. <laughs> You know, pick it up, make it ridiculously light, and th- and then throw it as hard as you can, so it's got even more velocity than normal. Mm-hmm. And and the, and all and all that velocity is going is going right is going right toward the ship. Yep, that's how that's that's physics, people. And I will admit the inspiration for that idea is seeing is seeing um, Randy Johnson pitch. <laughs> you know the guy—the guy who, when he was in Texas, was called the Big Unit. Yep, I know. And all, and also, um, Pigeon Killer. <laughs> yeah, some. T- it's not an—it's not an uncommon occurrence for animals to, for animals of all types to wander into stadiums. In fact, some stadiums will have and will have a cat just to deal with potential mice issues. Or um, to deal, and the, or they'll have very large nets over the open, the open uh, top to prevent birds from coming onto the fields. Well, in this case, that net didn't didn't quite work because a pigeon got in just as Randy Johnson was do, was doing a pitch, so it flew Ooh, right yeah. into the area of the fastball and um, exploded. Did they rule that as a ball or a strike? I think th- I think they ruled that as a do-over. I know. I'm just be- I'm being a smartass. Um. Anyway, I sure as hell say that was a strike. Yeah. The next one that we have is summoned. Psycho. And well, obviously we can't um we can't go the Virgil route with this. <laughs> Don't make me sing it again, because I will. So in instead instead the instead the approach I, the approach that I'm thinking that I'm thinking of going with this is a this is a this is a this is a long sword. Let's go with the shape of a Jian. 
Okay. Which you can constantly pull duplicates of itself from. Mmm, sword storms. So, pull, pull one. At first, you at first you just the thing is you actually have to you actually you actually have to you actually have to grab them. So it's not a case where you can just create create it create it out of create it out of nowhere. You'd mainly be use using it to um to create more to create a net to create an extra sword to either wield or throw. Okay. Oh. I was I was I was aiming towards the uh the idea of uh of <laughs> I was thinking more about Yudi from uh from Common Rider Blade the summoned the thing that is summoned is not the sword. <laughs> You summon the wielder of the sword. Mm -hmm. And the as far now the ne now as far as as far as the next one, um, actually for. For the, for our summoned sword, I think we can call that one mirror, since it's literally making mirror duplicates of itself. Although this would probably be a great way to this would probably be a great way to scam auctions. <laughs> I'm going to sell you my priceless treasure sword. You are. Yes, I need the money. And then it fades away. Good way to get everyone to hate you too. Um. Sword mages in fourth edition had something not too far removed where they could always they could always call their sword back after attuning to it. So an easy way to get the GM to hate you is to sell the sword off, then then wait until you're out of town and then call it. Yeah, I can I can see a DM going, "You're an asshole. I'm not allowing that." <laughs> um. Well, one one get one figured out a clever way to do. Clever way to do it, where he tried to summon the thing, but um, it's these. But he had rationalized that summoning it is kind of like calling one's lightsaber using the force, so it got stuck along the way. Doesn't surprise me. Granted, you can just re you can just reattune to another sword, so what? Well, so it didn't completely fix the issue, but um, in that case, that was a, that was a relic. We that was a ar that was a full on artifact weapon that he lost. And nobody forgave him for it. Yeah, I can understand. Oh, good way to troll the party too. But banished. Um. When did this become a Yu-Gi-Oh game? <laughs> um, I think I think for I think for. I think when it I think when it comes to when it comes to the idea of of banishing, um, thing things like turn effects in D in D and D come to mind. Or we don't I don't want to double dip into the into the idea of uh, of exorcism. So I'm actually actually for this kind of thing, I would pro I would probably you I would probably utilize the um so the setup that the setup that I did with the sensors in Project Gaia. Um, a sensor is a, is essentially a magic bounty hunter. Mm -hmm. if, if some, because there, I didn't want I I didn't want because of the set because of the casual amount of magic within Project Gaia. I didn't want to do the whole magic is this un is this un is this unknown and and dangerous thing because frankly that's been done to death instead i went with the approach of people people can re people can research magic when they're when they when they properly are are licensed but they have to follow the rules of what's known as the cipher and there and there are a few very key rules with this one um whatever you're researching on you do have to submit reports which is, you know, sensible. 
Two, um, you are not you are not to you are not to use your you are not to use any magical abilities you have for political gain. Also sensible. And three, the th the three forbidden the three forbidden arts you are not you are not to dabble in unless gi unless given a unless given a limited license. And those are um, sangromancy, i.e., blood magic. Yep. Um, necromancy. And havomancy, i.e., chaos magic. If somebody is busted dabbling in the, dabbling in those, they send in a censor to deal with them. And they you, they utilize special weapons that don't cut, but what they do is attack your uh, your ability to to uh, you, to call upon magic. If I need to use RPG terms, they, they have a sword that they have a sword that does MP damage. Oh great, we're doing Star Ocean until the end of time. There's no MP, <laughs> there's no MP kill, and in fact, when I used this setup once in in for a setting that had um van, for ancient spells, it was even worse because you um because getting hit with this thing, you would forget spell spells that you had memorized. Get hit enough, would you just permanently lose spell slots? Yes. Oh, that's good. I knew that that was coming. Um. I mean that's that's a fun idea for a sword that banishes magic. Mm -hmm. But I uh <clears throat> I had a, a a little bit of a I, I I guess you could call this a joke and a little yet yeah, a little bit not. It's a sword that has been banished if uh if the name is anything to go by and um. What I was thinking is, it's a sword that it, that generates its own pocket dimension and chooses its wielder, and then forces them to go through a set of tasks to fully master it. And if they can't, well, much like Truck Coon, he'll isekai you. <laughs> you have no cho you have no choice in the matter. It is an ego weapon, and then he returns to his pocket dimension. I think I like I think I like that approach better. And given that the the vibe that I end up getting is for whatever reason I keep I keep visualizing the shape not too far removed from the soul shrine weapon from Otogi. Okay, yeah, I can see I can see what you're saying there. Um just with with a bunch with a bunch of symbols that that light up to to demonstrate how far um you've progressed along its tasks. Yeah, yeah. Um, and and not only, not only that. Um, the the weapon itself slowly uh, changes forms. Like the very first test is going to be someone seeing it in the shrine. It's not going to look pretty. It's been there for eons. It's been there for ages. So. Your first task is to determine that what you have is actually of value. As I'd, I'd imagine that in that its initial state, it looks it looks rusted, worn, and and ge and generally some generally something that's fallen into disrepair. Think of um, the master sword uh, as it's put into the pedestal in the memories of Breath of the Wild, except even more rusted and crusty. That's what. That's what I. I'm thinking that that sort of disrepair. There's chips. There's huge gouges out of it. Shit like that. Mm -hmm. So your first test is someone who has stumbled upon the sword. In in fact, unknowingly, you've been chosen for the tests. Um, is to determine that what's in front of you is much more worthwhile than you think it is. And uh, if you can't even determine that, well, the sword has no use for you. And well, as I said. You have no choice in the matter. You get to go to another world. If that other world is your is your previous world, you're lucky. If not, have fun. And unlike normal isekai, you don't get any special powers for getting sent anywhere. You're just you. But we could we could add on the idea of banishing magic as part of as one of the later skills you get by by succeeding through its tests. 
In fact, we could technically, if we really wanted to deep dive on this one, we could make everything have something to do with banishment. Mm -hmm. But that's, you know, that's, that's a different video for a different time. Yeah. Now, the next one is Dwarven, which is interesting because when people usually think of Dwarven weapons, they, they don't just think, think of weapons of... Yeah. They think of axes, ha ham hammers, and hammers and the like. They don't think of um, swords. Or they think of weapons made by dwarves of, and of being su of superior quality. And because dwarves. Mm -hmm. <laughs> oh. Like our dwarf druid that forges by singing it from the ground. Yeah. <laughs> um... <laughs> But the 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 approach, the approach that the approach that I'm going with this is that this is this it this this would be a this would be a long sword in the in the hands of dwarves, but for a lot for a lot of other people, not not so much because because of it'd be yeah, it'd be almost it'd probably be like Wakazashi or Kodachi sized. Mm -hmm. It's a long sword for a dwarf. Yeah, not necessarily. Not long enough to be not long enough to be a long sword, but not short enough to be a short sword. Um, but I'm not. I wouldn't make this thing heavy, but I would. I would have it that this that this weapon is very solid. I.e., this 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 was this was cr a dwarven craftsman made made it specifically built to fucking last. Built to last. Dwarven sized. Mm -hmm. I'm going to add a third a, a, a third qualifier. Cuts rock like butter. Yes. <laughs> I'd pro I'd probably I'd probably also ha I'd probably also have it that um and that it's very easy when somebody's parrying with this weapon for whatever weapon um hit it to get to get broken. Well, I mean. Metal is just melted rocks. <laughs> I'm not wrong. No, you're no, you're not. the po The point is, is that is that some somebody goes to strike the wielder of this thing. He he parries, and their weapon bends or snaps or, sn or yeah. snaps because it because it's a lot har because it's a lot harder. Yeah, and so it would take other magical weapons to fend it off. Mm -hmm. Um. Because it's a sword, it's dainty. Or at least compared to other dwarven weapons, it's considered dainty. I imagine this to be let's see, um I am so here's 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 the reason I want to name it. And also the backstory for it to name it this. This was Forged to be both the defense weapon and wedding present for a female dwarven noble. This was her her side of the wedding presents. Uh, her her groom was going to be given a warhammer forged by her clan. Mm -hmm. um, unfortunately, in transit, uh, the groom, being drunk off his ass because, well, bachelor parties in dwarf land are very, very wild takes the sword and carves into her house to go steal her in the, in, in, back to his clan in the old, 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 old dwarf traditions because he's drunk off his ass. So, but she's happy with this because to her it's romantic. Dwarf busting through my walls to come and get me? Hell yeah. Um, so we call this sword Wedding Crasher. <laughs> I brought you your sword. I brought you much ale. Now let's go back home. Just throws her over his shoulder. And he is fucking tipsy as shit because, well, he's dad at a bachelor party. And this is, and remember, folks, this is tipsy for a dwarf. I mean, they've only been through three of the taverns and drank them dry. And this is a dwarven city. How many taverns do you think are left before the Bachelor Tour ends? 
so she's, so she's dragged along for the rest of the tour because fuck that he's not going to stop this before he goes home with her there you go we have an awesome sword and a backstory for it and its name yep um now the 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 next one the next one that we have here is elvin So this this is going to have to mostly be me because of your your distinct hatred, isn't it? Okay. How so do we, how do we make a weapon that is that, that is unmistakably at playing on every elven stereotype we can, we we can think of of It's a unicorn horn carved to look like an elf's ear. <laughs> As tempting as that is, I don't think we can go with that. Fine then, fine then. It's a it's a sun crystal, whatever we want to make up a sun crystal to be, but a sun crystal carved to look like a unicorn's horn on top of a handle, a, a hilt, uh, shaped like a like the world tree that they live in. There you go. <laughs> you want me to go stereotypical? I can go further. I think I think that's. I would I would make one li I would make one little um change on this particular thing. What's that? This is a sword that is sentient. Okay, of course, because um, the elves would give something else ego as much as they have. Yep. And um it do it's not going to do the whole isekai thing like like with the like with the with our um, banished sword. Mm -hmm. Which Wait, did we give it a name? No, and I'm think I'm think I'm I am thinking of calling it tribulation. Uh, yeah, that works. Um, the sword of tribulation. But when it comes to when it comes to our elven sword, it will talk at great length about how great the elves are and how you, and how you and how they are so much better th how they are so much better than you and second guess every single fucking thing you do. And now talk, come and on. Talk about how an elf would do. And talk about how an elf might have done, might have handled the situation. Okay, now monk, as much as I love this idea, we gave a good weapon to the dwarves, and as much as you hate elves, we should at least throw them a bone. Okay, fine. It only it only regales you with elven stories. I've got a better idea, because it does throw a bone to the elves, but it doesn't do them any favors. Okay. It regales you with a 100% accurate historical accounting of elven culture. <laughs> even the even the stuff they want to forget and hide. Does this also mean that they, that it would do the same thing with dark elves? This means it would do the same thing with anything. It is unable to tell a lie. This is a sword of pure non-fiction in a world of fiction. <laughs> Especially the elves who like to... At least stereotypical elves who like to say, yeah, we, we, uh, we didn't actually do those things you think we did. We, we, we were mysterious and did something different. No, you, you did those things, says yeah. the sword. Shut up, you goddamn... You made me. And uh, remember, I cannot tell a lie. But, uh... It, it, it only tells you these stories at times at which it is appropriate because it's an ego sword and it's not stupid enough to distract you in battle where it could potentially get taken by somebody worse. Mm -hmm. um, of, co of course, of course, there's the issue of it of it being a constant companion when you're um, when you're in town or you're making camp. Yeah, but because it does have all of those elven histories, it might know things about the places you're in. It's a knowledge weapon. I think one last uh, one last uh, thing that we should give it, since the, the blade is forged from a sun crystal, whatever that is, I just made it up on the spot. Um, I'm thinking uh, it's going to have... Th this is where the light sword went in the, in the idea of light. It's going to have a preternatural um, glow to it. Some sort of some sort of otherworldliness that casts low light um, and pulses when it talks, because I love that idea with anything that is a sentient weapon. 
mm-hmm. when glowing parts on it glow brighter as it's talking. But next is delicate. I mean, delicate looking or an actual sword that would break easy? Um, so that's the case. Let's just make a sword that's that looks like strung together lace. <laughs> yeah, I feel, I feel I feel like this I feel like this would look like the um look like look like the the embodiment of the of the stereotype of, of the noble woman wielding a sword that she actually doesn't know how to wield. Especially especially for a princess. In fact, princess would be a perfect would be a perfect name for this sword. Princess, Jesus. Um, did we name the we didn't name the previous sword, did we? No, but I think I think um I think the el- I think the elven sword should be called Historia. Or Historia, Historia works too. Um, but as as far as the sword named Princess, hold on, hold on, before before. <laughs> so are you saying that the sword is named Historia, and because it is radiant, that makes it a radiant Historia? God damn it! <laughs> By the way, good game, everybody. You should play it, especially its remake. Just be, just, just remember. Uh, now I get no. Never mind. I got the, I got the wrong, um, I got the wrong radiant historia in the ba- in the back of my head. <laughs> oh. Stock is your friend, yes, so makes, so so make stock of his his achievements. Mm-hmm. But. The way the 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 uh, the approach the approach that I, that I'm going with this with because it is called princess the approach the approach is um this is <laughs> this this partic- this particular the story that I have is 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 that this partic- this particular weapon was was um. Was speci- was specifically requ- was specifically requested by by a by a woman who was more concerned with with uh, even with with lo- with looking pretty for her up upco- for an upcoming duel that she that that she w- that she was go- that she was going into rather than rather than something that could actually you know help her win. Mm-hmm. And the. The haughty attitude that she had when she got beat was inherited by this sword. So whoever whoever holds whoever holds this thing ends up acting like a princess, like the like the princess that she was. Mm, her uh, her nature infected and and uh, and affected it. Mm-hmm. I was th- I was thinking that whoever wielded the sword turned into a princess, but or or look or started looking like one, but nah, that's too obvious. Mm-hmm. Um. So the ne- the next one that we have is aquatic. Um, it's tempting to go with let's make this a trident instead, but that's. That's low hanging fruit. Mm-hmm. Um, I am think I am thinking. I'm think a lot of a lot of aquatic weapons either use a generic body of water or they tend to or they tend to lean more towards the ocean. Or they look like Brotherhood from Final Fantasy X, mm-hmm. which is also a water elemental weapon. So yeah. I am. I am think. I am thinking. I am thinking instead. The theming that we use is that of a river. Okay. Because the. If you want to get real technical, I am u- as a basis. I am using a snake sword, a, a la ivy, as as some as somewhat of a basis for this kind of thing. Yeah. <clears throat> But the key, the key thing is that the snake part that is that is its water form. The key thing the key thing with it is that when it transforms, it can it can do, it can it can um, it will always it will always go it will always go forward even if it twists around. 
But okay. it doesn't have to be one route. It can't. You can do multiple routes with this setup. So essentially, essentially a thrust that ends up with that ends up with multiple, well, streams. Yeah. And as and because because of that, I do th I do think that um that river is the best name for this particular weapon. Mm-hmm. So it's still it's still it still meet it still meets the theme. It's just it's just that instead of doing the ocean, we're doing something a little more specific. Well, and aquatic just means of water. So mm -hmm. river, ocean, hell, it could have been rain. And we'd still be good. Yeah. And and of course and of course if one wanted to, they could use this sword to make water whips. Because we gotta we gotta get our avatar the last airbender in there. Now the nec the next one is <coughs> forest. Isn't this just Elven again? <laughs> Um, no. So forest. Um, okay. So I'm thinking Musashi's ore blade, at least something along that line. Yeah. And that's or o a r guys, not or o r e. I could, I could, I could see that, and I, do, I do want, I do want to. With that, with that one, I'd I'd like to make a I'd like to make a few um a a a, sli a slight change. Okay. It can it can adopt the properties of different types of trees. Properties in what way? E either, that could mean a lot of different things. Either um either becoming very solid or very flexible. Like on one. Okay. On one hand, on one hand. On one hand, oak. On the other end, um, bamboo. I mean, bamboo's technically grass, but okay. Oh. I was going to say you because you is used as a common bow, uh, common bow staff, mm -hmm. and bow st that's bow staff as B O W again, as in the stave used to create the actual bow curve. Yeah. I, w in the si in that si the other thing that the other thing that I'm considering having it do is that, um, is that with a qu with a quick slash you can th you can throw a whole you can throw a whole lot of leaves about as a distraction or um, or th or throw a whole bu or throw a bunch of seeds. Throwing seeds would be nice. Mm -hmm. You could use it to reforest an area. <laughs> that uh, of that course. Of course, the seed seed if it's if it's if it's tree seeds, um, that implies that not only are you throwing things like apple seeds, you're throwing pine cones and acorns too. Yeah, um, imagine um, imagine someone firing, imagine someone gatling firing um acorns. <laughs> I don't have to imagine that. I uh, I've seen that happen. <laughs> of course, just imagine someone equipping an acorn. We can. His name is Common Rider Goodydon. Yeah, but that's that would be that would be how I'd handle um, Forest. The next the next prompt that we have is oh before before I um before we get to the next prompt I think this think the Forest Sword we should have should be named um I want to be a smartass and name it Shrubbery. <laughs> let's let's not um. And say we did. Uh, hmm. Well, we could all, we could always call it Dryad. Dryad works, but I was thinking more the Arbor. That I prefer. I prefer that one. Yeah, because it, it's not necessarily a spirit of the forest; it's the forest itself. Thus, mm -hmm. it's the Arbor. Yeah. Could be worse. We could name it Ent. No, I would. I would have vetoed you about seven hundred ways from Sunday that if you had said that. Mm -hmm. But you vetoed yourself first, so that's okay. <laughs> so the next one that we have is broken, 
And so this sword is broken itself. Mm -hmm. um, now, for, for a lot of cases, I've seen people take this one literally. Or, or take the route of, say, Riven's sword from League of Legends. Mm -hmm. Um, I'd like, I'd like to go, I'd like to go with, I'd like to go with something, di something different. This is, this is a sword that ended up seeing the great old ones one too many times. So, do we have another, we uh, another uh, ego weapon, and this one's just insane? In in the case in the case to an, to an extent I'd say I'd say I'd say the um the approach the approach that ends up that you end up having with this is that wielding this wielding this weapon let lets you see the quote unquote truth. Uh no. Why would you do that? I wanted I wanted to do broken in a way that was that was a little less obvious. No, I understand that, but there, there is a statement: "The truth shall set you free." Um, while true, hey, <laughs> uh, the truth is also binding in certain ways. Hmm. You're set free of some things, and then inextricably and eternally bound to others. Um, never a good thing. Never a good thing. The the way the the way that the way that I um the way that I see it, um. This per, this partic this particular sword um wield, wielding it I'd say um. You'd end you'd end up being not too far removed from a Malkavian. We're joining the Malkov channel. <laughs> we can talk to all the others. What others? You're the only one. No, there's plenty of Malkavians. No, you're the only one. But you're the only one. I actually had a Malkavian with a dementation like that in one of my games, <laughs> where its dementation was literally the the brain had convinced it it's the it's the only Malkavian, and all other Malkavians are uh, are figments of its imagination. So then he started calling himself Malkov. Mm -hmm. I didn't go over too well with the Ventru, <laughs> as I'm sure everyone can imagine. Yeah. But th but because of, but because of that, um, I'm not e I'm not even going to give the name because I see it as a name that is impossible to pronounce. The thing that should not be. Mm -hmm. That's just what most people will call it, just like they do with everything else. Mythos from the from the Lovecraft mythos. Mm -hmm. Um. So the the next one is tooth slash bone. So, I mean, it can be literal, a sword crafted from the tooth or bone of a large beast. Mm -hmm. It can be figurative, a sword made to look like a tooth or bone, or it can be a combination of the two. I'm, th I'm thinking of, I'm thinking of a, of a, um, a sim... I'm thinking of a of a sim of a scimitar like set like like setup made from made from animal bone. Okay, just to make sure it's not from the from any arm bones. That wouldn't be very humorous. Ooh. Hey, the low hanging fruit was there. I have to take it at least once. That's it's, you 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 define that in my contract. The but the but the the thing the thing is is that is that I'm go is that I'm going with two of them that are kind of opposites because the 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 approach that the approach that can be had is um is cross cross the cross the swords together and chomp chomp. Mm. You've just designed a bone version of the scissor sword. That's all it is. Yeah. <laughs> Oh. The next one that we have is floral. Yeah, that one. That one's interesting, but 
flower swords are always hard to do. And, and, you know, I think for the older weebs out there, again, um, the, the, the iconic flower weapon we probably most often think of is one of two things. The Rose Whip from Yu Yu Hakusho or the Rose Bits from G Gundam. I'm go I'm going with the approach the approach that I, the approach that I'm going with is something more something more is a essentially a thicker a thicker rose whip. But that but the key the key thing with it is being is being able to generate a variety of different pheromones and different scents. Okay. Because the the way I see it, the real um the re the re the real ability of the real ability of this weapon is to Is the is the fa hang on a sec? Okay. Oh, the real the real effect of this is because because of what I mentioned earlier. Picture this kind of weapon ha creating creating the scent of a raflasia. Yeah, which is sickly sweet. Mm -hmm. Or, or you, or um, espe and especially consider the fact that not only the scent but the intensity of said scent. So um, you fight you fight against you fight against somebody with a very sensitive nose. They're gonna be too dis they're gonna be too distracted to even to even put up a fight. <coughs> yeah. Um, I, I still have to say though that uh, I've I've smelled a Riflegia for real. Mm -hmm. That stuff is gross. Yeah, no, just ima just imagine the the that particular or that particular aura being come out coming out very powerfully with somebody who has who has say a dog's sense of smell. Mm hmm. Prob it would probably it would probably just knock them out simply because of sensory overload. Either that, or they'd be too busy vomiting. Because for anyone who has never smelled a reflegia, um, you're lucky because it's a sickly sweet smell, and it's not sickly sweet in the way that I think you're thinking. Um, I usually tell people it smells like rotting meat. Yes. And then when people tell me, but rotting meat doesn't smell sweet, I'm like, you're dead wrong. There are plenty of uh, aromatics released from rotting meat that is intentionally made to make it smell sweet in order to attract um, de the decomposers and other uh, other elements of nature that, well, decompose bodies. Mm -hmm. Whether that's fun fungi, whether that's uh, bacteria, whether that's scavengers. Um, anyone who's ever actually smelled the sickly sweet smell of a Reflegia knows exactly how it smells like rotting meat. <clears throat> um, but yeah, okay. A, a slightly thicker rose whip that also controls scents and other uh, pheromones in order to fuck with the enemy. Got it. So next is Musical. Wait, 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 wait! It's it's the Jusokan? What? That's... For anyone who doesn't know what I'm referencing, because they don't watch uh, Sentai and only watch MMPR. The uh, act, honestly, the honestly, the approach. To th there's two. There's um two approaches I was considering. That's certainly one of them. The uh, the other is the is um Ryoma from Thunderbolt Fantasy. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I knew you were gonna go there. 
Um, but truth, but truth be told, um, I I see I see this as a very short blade, like dagger sized. One that with that um creates music with creates music with a, with a wave, but if it's not held properly, the um it it sounds like it sounds like sounds like the world's worst orchestra. The uh, the appro the the way to use this thing properly, in or especially in order to do the sonic attacks that it can that it can bring to bear, is by wielding it the way you would wield a conductor's baton. Mm -hmm. Because if you just if you just wield it like a dagger, um, like I said, world's worst orchestra. Mm -hmm. And yeah, I do th I do think calling this calling this weapon um, concerto would be appropriate. Concerto. I mean, I would be a smart ass and call it Takata and Fugue, but. Uh... I'm just, you know, a smart ass like that. So, you already knew that. Mm -hmm. And besides, the wielder of this weapon is essentially conducting an invisible orchestra to attack. Yes, they are. So, the next one, the next one that we have is blessed. I'm not quite sure what they think blessing is, but blessings can be from unholy things as well. <clears throat> but I'm sure that they're going for the stereotypical blessed, uh, um, sort of a of a paladin type thing, or at least that was probably what the idea behind the prompt initially was. Mm -hmm. oh. Of course, these prompts have already been taken into weird places. Well, since since it could, since it could be since it could be blessed by a, since it could be blessed by a holy or an unholy approach, I say um, let's take the Cecil route from from FF um Dissidia. It transforms between the two. Yep. It can. Okay. It, it can, I I already have a name. Then it's Nephilim. Mm -hmm. It can either it can either it either has a either. It looks it looks like it looks like an angel's weapon or a demonic weapon, but it but it always it always looks like a um, a long sword. Mm -hmm. Probably. And in each form, it has it has commensurate uh, commensurate powers uh, mm -hmm. over the various realms of of. What you would expect an angel or a demon to have control over? Yeah. Oh. But but I say that the drawback of such a weapon is, well, uh, the same drawback as Dizzy having Necro and Undine. This thing's going to be very powerful, and while it may not be an ego we ego weapon, the influences of its creation and its uh and its dual dual format is going to, um affect the actual attitude of the person wielding it if they aren't sufficiently uh, steeled against those influences. Mm -hmm. Now, next is eyes. Idea for this one, but go for it. I want to hear what you have. Um, the 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 approach the approach that I'm th that I'm thinking of is the is um the so is the sword and the sword ends up um having having a bit of a tel having is having an extending approach like a like a te like a telescope but more importantly is the, is the fact that I'd si actually I'd si actually I scratched that. It ha it has the sort of eye like setup that you would see in say the sort of omens in thun in Thundercats. Mhm. Mm but how but how it's used and how it's utilized instead is once it's once it's active you essentially you essentially are you essentially are able to treat um any any sentient creature with eyes 
within within the immediate area as your as potential security cam so camera footage so you're able to see from the eyes of other people within a specific range of you yes. well, other other beings within a specific range of you so long as they have eyes to look through yeah okay that's an interesting idea mine's a little bit more fucked <sighs> so in Lovecraftian mythos, the king of all elder gods, Azathoth, is called the Blind Dreamer. The sword is made from his missing eyes. And the, uh, the power, unlike the broken sword, which just is a sword that would also inflict you with madness eventually, mm -hmm. is, the, is the power Azathoth has, which is to see the world through, through the dreams. And those dreams are usually, in some way or another, uh, prophetic. They also see through to the true nature of things because of that. So now Cthulhu no longer destroys your mind when you look at him. You just see, you know, Cthulhu for what he is rather than what he can't be uh, purported to be. By cutting through the, the veil that is their madness, you see the eternal truth of what they are. Mm -hmm. um, I imagine it to be a weapon... That Azathoth would like back greatly, please. And uh, if you don't give it back to him, there's going to be a bad time. But, uh, you know, the sword doesn't want to go back to him. It turned into a sword for a reason. Mm -hmm. They don't want to be his eyes anymore. He's gross. Yeah, it's, I'd, say, I'd say we can go with that. What would, you, would you simply name this thing the Eyes of Azathoth, or did you have, it, or did you have a different um, name in mind? I, uh, I wanted to base the name off of the um, off of the old proverb in the land of the blind the man with one eye is king. Mm -hmm. So I was I was going to I was going to call it uh, I guess the best one would be would be uh, Sep, uh, scepter of the blind king. You know, it's it's a it, it it isn't an actual scepter, but it has a, it has a ceremonial name because of its status. Mm -hmm. oh, so the next one is alive. Is it bad that I'm thinking of the version of Soul Edge that is almost entirely meat? No, <laughs> but the 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 approach. To be to be quite honest, the approach the approach that that I'm that I'm considering with this is, for one, um, I'm going to end up making this a kopesh. There's a reason. Okay. There's a reason for it. Um, okay. The wielder of the sword is too alive. In the in the sense of the, in the sense that. No matter it is physically. Im it is impo one they end up they and en they end up he they end up um they end up healing qu they end up healing quickly mm -hmm. um two they cannot be knocked unconscious okay and th and three if the swords if the swords taken from them or they or or they en or they end up they end up um they end up having their end up having their funeral. Um, they're still they're still uh, they're still alive even while even while they're rotting. Um, yeah, I'm kind of basing this particular concept on the idea that was promised with the real horror of Miracle Day. Even though the, even though they didn't actually deliver. Okay, I can see where you're going with it. Mm -hmm. Um. So the neck, the for the and and for and for this, I'm think I'm um, I'm thinking of just calling it life. Like you would think, because a lot of people would think, oh, a sword that grants eternal life—that'd be awesome. They don't realize how horrifying that actually is. Eternal life does not mean eternal youth or eternal uh, 
eternal uh, indestructibility. Um, the other, I'd also bring up to I'd also bring up to make it to hammer the home point home even further. The Grim Reaper, or people associated with the Grim Reaper, or people associated with um, deities that have that have the death domain, recoil around you. Mm -hmm. And of course, of course, if you end up losing the sword, all that all that time you ended up extending um, get gets has to get paid up. So, uh, much like the, um, I guess the best word is, a uh, when, um, what's his name, ages to death, real quick. You're, th you're thinking of Indiana Jones? E. Yeah. Yeah, that's... I always, I always forget his name, but during the Last Crusade, when he drinks the wrong cup. Mm hmm He chose... Holy. Jesus was the son of a carpenter. He wouldn't have a jeweled, he wouldn't have a jeweled cup. So the next one that we have is multi-purpose. Although truth be told, you could take any of, you could take any of the weapons from Ruby and slot this in this particular spot. Um multi purpose that's an that's an interesting and i'm not sure how you would how would you cover that um i would i would say the to be quite honest, the the approach the, the approach that I'm that I, that I am considering is the is the idea of a of a um, sword that takes on the properties of di of different um, magical metals. Okay, so for example, taking on the properties of adamantium to become extremely tough and and indestructible, mm -hmm. taking on the Properties of Mithril to become very magically attuned and, and a, a magical charge. Uh, you've got um, you've got a decent setup with it if you want to just use the five magical materials in Exalted. <laughs> uh, <laughs> uh, that's good. That's uh that's actually really good because mm -hmm. you you've got the uh, the Soul Steel, the Jade, um, or Calcum. Star metal and moon silver, I think it was. Yeah. I mean, that means its base form has to be auric alchem, though, mm -hmm. because you know that was the being good at everything. It it also means that um that I'd say I'd say the j I'd say the jade form would look would end up looking like the um rainbow shell weapons in Chrono Cross, just constantly changing colors. Yeah, because the whole thing with jade is that there's a bunch of different varieties of jade, each with their own sets of properties. Yep, e each of the it comes from the five elements of of traditional uh, Eastern elemental uh, setups because it's it, the their five aspects are wind, earth, fire, water, and wood. Mm -hmm. They don't include metal there. They 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 allowed wind to stay in, but uh. But still, it's it's meant to be a, uh, similar to the same five element setup. Yeah, and I would I would I would say that th that um, you could probably call that you could probably call this weapon elementalist. Um. Trying to think if there might be a better name for it in mind. Uh, hmm. I I can't really think of a better word. Um, I have another name in mind, but I want to save it for a different sword. 
All right. So next is Vampire Hunter. Yes, I know that's technically Vampire Killer, but still. We can't give him. We can't give this a sword resembling that of D. It's tempting as it is. I mean, D's special ability wasn't really in his sword, though. It was in the fact that he had a demon named Paracelsus in his hand. Mm -hmm. And uh, also, you know, it was a Dompier that could survive in the sun, but still. To a point. Well, I mean, it's the reason he covered himself in everything. So that the sun could touch as little of his skin as possible. Extending his time out in it. Um, as for a, a sword that is a vampire hunter, I'm thinking, I'm thinking, and this, this, just, just hear me out here, it's hollow. It's hollow so that when you stab it into the fucker, it drains him of blood. No matter where you stab it in, Why it do draws I the out the blood. the design of this sword would look more like an oversized steak? I mean, you are hunting vampires. A metal stake that's hollow in the center, so that when you stab them in the in the leg, they lose some of their blood energy, and when you stab them in the arm, they lose a little bit more. And then when you stab them in the heart, they die faster. Mm -hmm. Or if we're going by very, very old vampire mythos, they're immobilized faster. Remember, people, a stake in the heart does not always kill the vampire, depending on the mythos you're talking about. But even even with even with that, you can only um. You can't you can't do much if you you can't do much if you're completely out of blood. Yep, you can't move. Unable to move. And would you? Um, I'm very tempted to call the to call this particular one Abraham. Abraham after Van Helsing. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, we could call it Abraham. Sure. Uh, there's one. There's one last little bit I wanted to add to it, and that is um, if you manage to kill a vampire with it, specifically by drawing out all the blood, it's going to get a little stronger. So it's a vampire hunter, but it itself is also slightly vampiric. I can, I can, cer I can certainly get that. Now, the next one is translucent. <laughs> Translucent, as in a sword you can sort of see through. Mm -hmm. um. <sighs> um. Well, actually, it depends on how translucent you want to make it. You could make it almost entirely see through a sword of glass, even. But we already have an unseeable sword. Um. Actually, actually, I have, I have a, I have a bit of an, I, I have a bit of an idea with this particular one. Um. I am th I am thinking th I'm thinking that the um this per this particular this per because of the, because of the way that this particular sword would look I'm thinking it would be about the size of a um ninja toe. Okay. Um the key thing the key thing is that the wield the wielder holding it their body has the has the effect of of what of what you would see in um or you see in, sh in shapes when look when on the other side of translucent glass, for instance. Mm. I.e., I.e., you can re you can you can make it you can make out some bit of the sh you can make it some bit some bit of the shape, but the details are impossible to see. Yeah. Um. Okay. I can see that being a, a good property for it to have. Um, on top of that, I think that besides the fact that the sword is the size of a ninja toe, because of the way the translucence works, you can't tell its exact size. Looking from the outside. Mm -hmm. which would, Because of that distortion. Which again would make it an ideal sword for assassins. Yes. 
And as far as the as far as the whole not being able to tell its size, what instantly comes to mind is the um is the main re the main reason why displacer beasts are so dangerous. Because of the fact that uh you can't really tell <laughs> Tell their exact position. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I can see that. <laughs> oh. Now the ne the next one on the list we have is stone. Man, stone and lava are two very similar things. Why'd you got to do a sturdy like that? I didn't come up with the list. I know. I wasn't talking. I said, "Why they got to? Why you got to be do us dirty like that? You being the people who created the list, and us being you and I." Um, I am thinking. I'm thinking that once a, once again, we're going to deal with a great sword. But this time, the 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 approach the approach that I'm go, that I'm going with is this is very this is very much a sword made of made of stone. It's just it's just it's just one that can. Can break can break apart into can break apart into shards and still, and be wielded around like an like an oversized whip. That sounds fun. I was almost thinking of a stone sword made of shards of different of different sizes. Um, that could be wielded as different sized swords, a la the fusion sword from Advent Children. I think I think this. I think this approach that I think the former approach might wor might work a little bit better. You could it probably feed, could. Um and of co of course one and of course the other option is just th is just make break out a bunch of shards and then th and then um th and then launch them. Mhm. Mm now the next one <laughs> we need a we need we need a name is oh what for st for stone um, shard. Okay. I was thinking either shard or flint. I think flint is actually better. All right. Oh. Oh God! I just realized what I walked myself into. Mm-hmm. So some somebody who somebody who ends up being on the business end of this weapon would. Meet the Flintstones. <laughs> I'm gonna need to take a cold shower after this. And the fact that I'm the one who walked you into it is just even better. I could have ignored it, but I knew but I knew if I didn't bring it up you would have. <laughs> well there's there's also the fact that uh you can say that if you manage to cut someone down to size with flint, they've been flint napped. I'm debating if that's even worse. Oh, they're both bad. <laughs> Don't no need to debate. They're just both bad. <laughs> so next is cosmic. And this is where I wanted to reserve my other name for, because I haven't whole idea and everything. Go right ahead. So most things that are cosmic have to do with space. The final frontier. Um, and I don't think that should be any different here, to be honest. Cosmic, by its very nature, especially because space is so vast, um, is... The uh, it is is basically going to be the, the the determination behind this. But I'm thinking that as a cosmic weapon, we don't go with shiny stars. We don't go with roaring suns. We go with a black hole. And so it's a sword that could very well absorb light. As well as have a, a, an immense attraction force, so getting away from someone who is wielding the sword is going to be difficult. Um, 
as for utilitarian purposes, it has a storage space because black hole. Um, and the most unique thing about it is it can... When it, when it absorbs light, much like how when a black, black hole absorbs light, it gets an accretion disk of sorts. It starts getting a, a, a halo around it mm -hmm. um, of light itself that, well, can eventually start blinding everybody if you're not careful. Um, and the name I wanted to give it is Corpus Astra, or Body of the Stars. Or even more literally, Dead Body of the Stars, because... Mass supermassive stars when they die become black holes. Mm -hmm. And of and of course and of course you could probably have that one of its attacks is sucking up every everything it can. A la Atomos. Mm -hmm. But yeah, um, that that was my idea for for a cosmic sword, a sword made of that is essentially a black hole unto itself, a magical black hole. I can I can go I can go with it I can go with that and I I would pro I would probably I would the shape would prob the shape would probably change between user to user but the um I'd imagine that the the way it the way it looks it is complete it looks like a black shape <laughs> yeah it's a it's a dark vaguely sword shaped thing. It's only when it starts getting the accretion disk that the that the shape starts getting uh, more defined. Because mm -hmm. black holes themselves are defined by what they occlude, the things that they block. Um, I also don't imagine this being a long sword. Because black holes are super dense and super small, I imagine this being a short sword. But, you know, the attraction force makes up for the lack of length. <laughs> Yeah, I'd say I'd say I would I'd say the whole attack and tumble thing wouldn't ex wouldn't be easy to do. Mm-hmm. Oh, if somebody's drawing this in battle, um, it is in your best interest to teleport away as quickly as possible. If they've drawn it, it's it's. I would imagine that this is a sword of last resort. That would be that would be accurate. Um, now the next one, the next one that we have is mechanical. Um, I am very tempted for us to for us to use this to do a gun blade. I know you're tempted, but that's also like, while that isn't obvious to most people, to our audience, I think that would be very obvious. Yeah. So in. Instead, 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 what I'm go what I'm going to be doing is a um. It it is go Imagine imagine what would happen if a if a tech priest found a way for found a way for his graft arm to you to use a great sword. Okay. That is that is the approach that I'm, that I'm doing. You, we have the blade, but it's a but. Is attached to it is attached to essentially an extra arm that you have to graft on. Okay. With a whole and and just to, and just to make things a little bit more grim dark, we're going with a um, we're going with the good we're going going with the chain sword effect with this kind of thing. Mm hmm. Um, a eviscerator type chain sword. A chain great sword, if you will. Mm -hmm. I'd say I'd say that fits the mechanical thing because what's more mechanical than the than the people who worship the machine god? Mm -hmm. So, what should we call this one? The the uh, the wrath of the Omnisaya? Um, a little a little bit a little bit. A little, a little bit, a little bit wordy, but I. But that's the mechanicus. Have you ever heard them make their chance? All shall be as the machine spirit wills it. Yeah, th yeah, def it definitely fits, and 
As an aside, I like how in the Mechanicus game they're never actually speak. They're never actually speaking words. It's when all they're... it's all binary. Mm -hmm. Um. So ne next is wind. Water, heart, go planet. No. <laughs> Absolutely not. Mm. No, instead, no, instead, we, instead, I, th <clears throat> I honestly, I'm honestly thinking of having of having this be a long sword that's where the blade splits open to act more like a fan. And and said fan create, and said fan can create well. Gusts of wind. So building on my Tessai idea from earlier. Mm -hmm. Okay. This is just a sword that splits open. <clears throat> I can see that. I already, I already used the feather thing, so I didn't want to double dip on that concept. Mm-hmm. And the... As far as, as far as the name, I'm thinking of I'm thinking of just um, gust. I was thinking more downburst. Downburst, I think, would work better. Yeah, well, because you're generating a large, intense, momentary gust of wind, um, and that's like that's like some of the downbursts up in the clouds and such. Mm-hmm. But the last one that we have is ornate. I should think that quite a few of the swords we've designed tonight have been rather ornate. I th yeah, but we can. I think we can. I think we need to go full on or full on ornate. This is. A, this is a golden sword covered in covered in covered in jewels. The scabbard is the scabbard is covered in more jewels than a game of columns. And <laughs> um, the approach the approach that I'm go the and the approach that I'm going is that um, if you end up if you end up um, drawing drawing this sword in the daylight, the light reflect there is so much light reflecting off of it that it blinds everybody in the area, including you. Yeah. <laughs> um, I mean that's that's that's. I'm gonna say that making a weapon that is just ornate, um, it's gonna end up being Dan Hibiki. That's true. Our joke weapon. <laughs> um, on top of that, as as the other part of the joke weapon, uh, much like. Uh, our potential scam sword from earlier that can create copies of itself. Mm -hmm. Any jewel pried from the scabbard or the sword um, regrows in a day. Of course, that means that the previous jewel then disappears from existence. But you Great. can pay your tab at the bar. Great, we found we found another we found another way to make a scam weapon. Oh no, this is deliberate at this point. This is a scam weapon. <laughs> it's a weapon that blinds this is this is the weapon Lupin Arsene the Third would would wep, would uh wield because he could blind everybody. It looks really ostentatious, and well we know how Lupin likes ostentatious. And he can scam the hell out of people with it. It is outright Lupin the Third's sword. At least it would be until Fujiko steals it. Or, uh, or, or worse, he gives it to Fujiko. He'd give it to Fujiko, but you see, the sword is bound to the person who's most greedy. So she'd have it for a day, and then the next day it'd be gone and back with him. She'd ask him why he stole it back. He's like, it was in bed this morning. More than you. Mm -hmm. <laughs> mm, no, instead he makes a joke about, you really do love me. 
they always say if you love something and set it free, and if it comes back to you, you uh, uh, it loves you in return. But I never imagined you'd give me back this this awesome sword. And Fujiko would be like, I didn't. <laughs> I should note that there, there was one clip that ended up making the rounds that I know it's never going to happen, but I but is it wrong of me to dream? And that and that was that was, and this was done as a joke, but essentially a um the idea of a crossover between Lupin and Kaito Kid <laughs> all started because because Kaito beat him to because Kaito Kid beat him to the punch, which is saying something even. With how "quote unquote" inept Lupin looks, he is anything but. But um, <laughs> getting back to the sword, because it is an embodiment of greed, I figure we we should just go uh, classic old school here and call it the Sword of Mammon after the Demon Prince of Greed. I can go with that. I could. I was. I was considering Midas, but that works better. I I figure this this ostentatious ornate sword we've created inspires greed more than creates it. So, mm. more than creates wealth, I should say. And because of, because of that, the. Would you say would you say that that the wielder ends up becoming more greedy? Well, it's uh as I said it's it's it, it's a prerequisite that the wielder has to be sufficiently greedy in the first place. Mm -hmm. Otherwise it'll, you know, revert to whomever its previous owner was unless that previous owner happens to be dead, which I imagine would happen a lot. Um greed inspires people to do some insane shit and killing a previous Wielder of the sword would not be so insane in comparison. Um, so they, they have to have a sufficient amount of greed in the first place. Mm -hmm. And then wielding it would, yes, just make them greedier. I can I can cer I can certainly go with that. Um and that that co that covers all of them. So we've so with this we have thirty diff we have thirty different weapons. Each mm -hmm. of them with their, each of them with their own little advantages and disadvantages. We kind we kind of skimmed we kind of skimmed a bit on the on the design of them because it was less about the design and more about the ability. Um, well, and of course, while Sword Timber was was started by artists as art prompts, that doesn't exclude from general writing ideal idea prompts. Mm -hmm. um, and I'm sure they wouldn't begrudge us designing the ideas of swords. And we gave general descriptions, mm -hmm. but the general descriptions leave more to the imagination. So people can imagine a sort of a thing, and then it may be different from how we imagine it, but it may be just as cool. Yeah. the The key thing is is that is the uh, is the effect of the sword, which all of all of these swords suffer from rule of coolitis, which we um. So there are there are th there are those who d who disparage the rule who, the rule of cool and prefer and prefer more realistic approaches or what they refer or what they believe is realistic. We have a name for those people. It's called grognards. I mean, yeah, that too. Um, rule of cool, unless not suitable to whatever situation you're in, is always going to be good. I mean, using rule of cool in a situation where things are supposed to be tragic and dramatic is not necessarily the best, unless being cool during the drama um, only enhances the tragedy, a.k.a. the Giga Drill Breaker in Episode 8 of Gurren Lagann. Mm -hmm. But those moments are not are not always around. Usually... Most of your rule of cool moments are going to be fairly straightforward. I would say I would say that the 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 other fa the other factor is that is that um, even even with that with dramatic storytelling, 
um, finding way, finding ways to appropriately heighten the drama is going is going to happen one form or another. Mm -hmm. And that's what the rule of cool helps. Mm -hmm. Plus, we see instances of the rule of cool in real life. <laughs> Although sometimes that becomes the rule of cringe. Um, I wasn't. I wasn't even going with that. I was going. I was going with say, um, with with say how with say how animals will utilize it in order to make mm -hmm. themselves a bigger threat than they actually are. Mm -hmm. Or 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 or, cer or certain animals being very brightly colored as it, as if to say, "Don't fuck with me. I'm poisonous." Aposematism. I don't know the exact pronunciation of that word. Mm -hmm. I have a sneaking suspicion. Yeah. The point. The point is. The point is, is that there is a lot of ways these kind of things can go about. And um, I should. I should note that with each of these weapons, they could be the centerpiece of a campaign all all on their own. I would not hand a lot of these weapons out the way the way some the way some modules do hand hand stuff out. We are not I'm not Monty Hall. Mm -hmm. But that will do that will do it for the, for this particular little experiment. Um as far as whether or not I'll do this in September in September a year from now and depends on if they have new prompts. I think it's easier to do one word prompts in this form than it was for RPG a day. Mm -hmm. Although the idea of the idea of doing this format for RPG a day in 2022, I'm not putting off the table. I had simply said that at the time that that whole one word prompt thing was hard to do vi do videos on in the way that I had done in the past. Yeah. Simply, simply because it's kind of it's kind of hard to talk. It's kind of hard to talk for five minutes on just a one-word prompt. Uh -huh. It's very clear that that whole one-word prompt setup was built more for um, Twitter or Facebook, not for YouTube. But we do have another episode of the Valley of the Judge coming tomorrow. This time it's going to be on the Herald, and I I will bring this up tomorrow. But I have to make a slight correction. The Herald is not Heavens and Heresy's answer to the Cleric. The Herald is the answer to the Bard. At least, at least according to Tanner, we'll be the judge of that when we get when we get to that point. And I'm pretty sure, no matter what, there's going to be a whole lot of arguing. <laughs> oh, who am I kidding? It's it's us. There's going to be arguing, no matter what. Man, if only Ash was with us on this particular journey, there'd be a whole lot more arguing. Yeah, well, I'm, I'm this, especially when we get to the magic system. <laughs> <laughs> it's not fancy and magic, Ash. Oh no! Allow me to play the smallest violin. But with all that said, I do. I would like to once again extend a sincere thanks to everyone who took the time out of their schedule to come onto the show and enjoy the madness. And there will be plenty more where that came from, as there always is here on the open bar of the internet. But until then, on behalf of the good brothers present and not present, my name is Mildra, I am your gaming monk, and join the watch. <laughs>